time in the Word. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just take a deep breath in your spirit. We know how much that you love us. You tell us time and time and time again how much you love us. You demonstrate it. You show us. If we listen to your word, it's a constant story. And we just thank you so much for the reassurance of the fact that our lives, when we belong to you, are in your hands. You are the lover of our souls. You want things for us that are greater than anything that we can ever want for ourselves, Lord. And so we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for the word that teaches and corrects and guides us. We need that guidance, Lord. And so this morning we come and we have open hearts. Lord, we, we're going to allow that filling that you have placed within your love and your spirit to, fill, to, to stay open and welcome the work of the resurrected Christ in our lives. We thank you, Father, that you make all things possible and nothing is impossible with you. And so we just thank you for ministering that grace to our hearts today and helping us to grow um, in a greater measure of understanding and in the power outflowing your resurrection. We thank you, Father, for salvation. And I pray if anybody's here that's never received you, Lord, who's never just called on your name, you say that if anyone calls on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. And that means that we need to um, call on you, confess our sins, and invite you to forgive us and to impart that life that you alone can give, that we can walk that out each day. So I just pray if, if someone's here that hasn't invited you into their hearts in the first place, that they would do so today. We just thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so if I were to ask you, do you have, you feel like you have an open heart about all things? You feel like you approach life with this openness to um, grow and develop, to gain greater understanding? Would you say that your, your heart is open to the newness that God wants to bring into your life each day? Would you tell me, yes, Pastor Mary, I am that open heart? Or would you have to say like, mm, you know, like it depends on the topic. <laughs> it depends. You know, how, how open? I'm open, Pastor Mary, until I think I see something in the natural that, um, that I don't think is going to be quite possible. So then I just kind of close my, my heart back up because so I, I don't want to get hurt, right? I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to be, you know, heading in a direction that you're not, Lord. And, and because of that, I just don't want to, I don't want to lay my heart out there. I don't want to put my faith, somebody say faith, I don't want to put my faith out there. <clears throat> Do you allow the word of God to speak to your heart and bring you that greater understanding that the life of God has designed for you? Would you say yes to that? So you have to ask yourself, living the eternal life to which God, uh, Christ calls us is difficult. And practicing a religion may be a whole lot easier, but it's empty and it's void. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul, he kept uh, teaching uh, the Ephesians. I was reading Ephesians yesterday, and he uh, kept teaching the Ephesians, and he'd say, you know, as they were teaching the gospel, Paul and the other uh, disciples that were helping him, were teaching the gospel. They were, they were opening themselves up all the time, and, and, uh, and they said, look, we are opening ourselves up to you. We're not restricting you. You are restricting yourselves. And sometimes, can I tell you, that, um, you know, we do that. We restrict um, ourselves from experiencing more of God. And the Apostle Paul says at the end of Ephesians chapter 1, open your hearts, widen your hearts so that you can receive that new thing that God wants to bring. Resurrection Day. We just had a celebrated Resurrection Day last Sunday. And according to the Gospels, um, on that day, Jesus was seen in many different places at various times. It was physically impossible for him to be in all of those places in one day. 
These appearances reveal the eternal life realities to which Jesus has entered. Because I don't know about you, but I believe he was in all of those places in that one day. Amen? I believe it with all of my heart. I don't have any problem thinking that that's physically impossible because our God is God, amen? And he has no problem, zero issues. It's kind of interesting to me because he, Jesus was able to appear, disappear, travel great distances, pass through um, even locked doors. And the disciples were frightened because things were so very different uh, than um, with Jesus now than before his death. And we could pause right there, couldn't we? Couldn't we? Because God is, you know, we have this idea of the living Christ, yup, 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 and then he faced death, and thank you for saving me from my sin, and thank you for giving me eternal life, and then we act like he's dead all over again. He's not dead. He's alive, and he wants to live, and he wants to move, and he wants to have his being in each one of us, and he says, if you'll believe, somebody say believe, if you will just believe, you will see. Amen? See, we want to see and then believe, but Jesus, if you'll just believe, you will see. And even the um, disciples in, in the room where we're going to read about it in just a minute, even they had their doubts. Even they had issues. You remember that, that Mary, last week when we were talking about Mary at the seeing the empty tomb, was downcast. Oh, you know, it's, 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 it's a down thing. And then the other two disciples, Peter and the disciple Jesus loved, we read about that last week where they, were, they saw the empty tomb and they, they went home. They went home. Not that they got it. They didn't get it. And then when Mary went back and told them that she had seen the Lord, they still didn't believe her. How convincing does Jesus need to be to your heart? Amen? That's, that's really what belief is all about. The disciples were frightened because um, it was a new thing. God was doing a new thing. And can I tell you, salvation should be the most exciting thing that we ever think about, and eternal life in particular, because every day you and I get a chance to walk with the eternal God through life, and we just never know what that's going to bring along, right? And shouldn't that be exciting? And shouldn't that be where we go like, yeah, let's do that. Let's just open our hearts. But if you're a controller and you want to have this closed control process, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. So open your hearts today. Open your hearts. Let's come to the word with open hearts. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about faith before we, oh, we read John. All right? Faith is the substance or the reality. Somebody say reality. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. The Apostle Paul wrote that in Hebrews 11. It's the reality. Faith is the reality of things hoped for and the evidence of things that we have not seen to this point. So, if we know that that's in the Word of God, then are we going to believe, believe that God is going to take us to places each day where we have to use our faith in order to walk out what he has for us. See, we can go through the motions of life, but are you going to believe that he has, oh, so much more for you than just navigating through a schedule in a given day? There are three aspects of faith that I want us to think about, and it's biblical faith, because, you know, like I talk to people all the time, they go like, oh, I just have faith. Well, you have faith in. Well, I just have faith that things will work out. That's scary to me. It is. Here, here's who I have faith in. I have faith in the living word. I have faith here. So biblical faith is actually belief that the Bible informs me about saving faith. This is truth. Do you believe this is truth? If you believe this is truth, say amen. Okay, so faith 
The first aspect of faith that we got to come to is that this word show, shows us something about God's love and his grace and that his plan of salvation is in here and that we must believe that it is going to minister something really valuable to us. We believe, amen? Faith is believing in this word. Second, faith is our belief that salvation is by grace alone. Again, we come back to the word because it tells us that. But the another layer of belief is that, and faith, is that uh, Jesus died for our sins he cleansed us from unrighteousness. He poured his righteousness within us. He comes and he makes his life within our hearts and in our lives, in our being, and he lives that out in the power of grace. And we have to have that belief in order to receive him in the first place. So that's another layer of saving faith, all right? Faith. Somebody say faith. faith. So we have the word, and then we need to believe in the work of Jesus. And what's the next one? Oh, yeah. Trust. Somebody say trust. Faith is about trusting. Trusting. And I, I don't know about you, but that's the biggest thing that's under attack in my life. Can anybody identify with that? That you would trust that God would have a plan for your life, that you would trust that God cares about your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that you would trust that God has actually um, equipped you with the things to handle anything that comes your way? Would you trust him? Would you trust him? Okay, so that is saving faith. You know, we're not just sitting back talking about any kind of faith. We're talking about faith that believes the word of God is true, that Christ is God's plan for salvation, and that we trust our lives with him. Amen. There's a few of you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Charles Spurgeon, he once said, faith is believing that Christ is who he said he was going to be, that he would do what he promised to do, and then we are to stand in a place to expect him to do it in our lives. So when we believe, here's what's going to happen. We're going to experience the expanding of our realities. It's going to just stretch and expand us as human beings. You and I can't handle the supernatural, uh, you know, omnipotent, on, uh, you know, like expanse of God. We can't, you know, like it's, it's come on now. He comes in and it's a seed, the word is a seed in our hearts and it grows and it grows and it grows and something's got to go, right? And, and something's got to give. And so we need to experience that expanding process of our faith and God takes us through life experiences to do it, doesn't he? All right, so let's read the Gospel of John, verse 20, or, uh, chapter 20. We'll start with verse 19. That Sunday evening, you'll be looking here for some of the things we just mentioned. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And then he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Verse 24. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wounds in his side. Verse 26. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, look at my hands, 
Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas exclaimed, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And then John goes in to tell the purpose of writing his gospel. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. By the power of his name. So let's talk about three things when thinking about expanding our realities. Peace over fear. Peace over fear. The fear the disciples were experiencing of the Jews and the Romans, they were sitting back going like, what's next? If we, if we go out in public, we're going to be, uh, you know, uh, a target for hostilities. What happened to Jesus could happen to us. If we go out and we actually preach the gospel, we're going to make ourselves enemies of Rome as well as the Jews, we're going to have ourselves, and we are going to have all kinds of hindrances, and, and they were afraid. They were afraid. So Jesus, in two occasions, comes into their midst, and he says, peace, peace, amen? Peace. When you and I are afraid, and we are plagued by fear, we need to understand the life of Christ in us. He is the Prince of Peace. He has the ability to bring peace, but you and I need to expand that by giving him the fear and receiving that which he alone can give, and that is supernatural peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives it. Do I, I give that? It's not what I give. I give you the peace from God. I give you that peace that is eternal life. I give you that which is truly powerful. Amen? You and I can try to make peace in our world, and we do try to do that, especially when we have all kinds of fear and anxieties and other things. It's because we feel like things are getting out of our control. But can I tell you that is actually a place where God can work the finest miracles in our lives? Because when we sit back and we go like, God, I have got to give this to you. I can't hold on to this anymore. I can't let this control me. It's stopping me from enjoying the life that you died to give me. I got to give this fear to you, God. I got to do it. I got to give it to you. And I need you to do that which only you can, and that is to bring that supernatural peace to my heart. I'm going to open myself up to you, God. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to give it to you. All those things that are not of you, I'm going to give them to you that are frightening me, and now I'm going to take and I'm going to put into my heart that which you alone can give. I'm going to let that have dominion instead. Fear comes against us all the time. And if you feel afraid of things or you have those anxieties going on, you are in the right place today because the enemy's doing it to everybody. It isn't just you, and don't you let him treat you that way. You just say, that, you know what? No. I understand that I am going to feel fear, but I don't have to give it the dominion over myself. I can give myself to the Prince of Peace instead. All right? And it takes... You may have to do that over and over and over again, but you will have the victory because you must believe, here it is, that he has overcome the world. Amen. He has overcome the world. And, and, and he says in his word that he, everything is going to bow. Amen? Everything's going to bow. So peace over fear. You and I need to stand in that place of having this this understanding that Jesus made peace with God. Jesus, for us, our sake, he made peace with God. And so peace is our inheritance. And when you're not feeling it, you have let something else come in there, and you got to send it packing. you got to send it packing. Jesus arrives in the middle of that room, and I love how he just, like, pops in right now. Don't you just love that? I think about that sometimes, how awesome 
Can I tell you how often he has come into my heart? Amen? Just popped in all like, oh, wow, thank you for that, Jesus. Amen? Amen. He, is, he is that awesome God who comes when we need him most. Amen? So we see that his resurrected body isn't, it's like ours but different now, right? So I love that kind of a, a point. You and I must not only take peace over fear, but we need to take belief over doubt. Belief over doubt. The disciples loved experientially Jesus um, because they were with him all the time. And then when he um, was crucified, and they, they're sitting back thinking, okay, like he used to walk with us hand in hand, and there was no place that he didn't go that we didn't go. And then all of a sudden, we don't see him. We don't feel the same about life. And Jesus now can be with everybody at the same time. And don't you know that's a whole lot better gift in the long run. Amen? There is no place that you go when you invite Jesus into your heart. There is no place that you go that he is not. And that would have never been available on the other side of the resurrection. Amen? Amen. Never available. He, you have to have the belief that he is always with you. Remember, other people believe when they experience something. Mary believed when she heard Jesus call her, her, her name, right? And, and what does it take for you to believe that God has this amazing plan for your life and that no, nothing that comes into your path is beyond his ability to make work for your good? What does it take for you to believe that? Because you have to have an experience with God and you have to put your, your, your uh, belief to work in those times. Thomas needed to experience um, very, something very specific. He wanted to touch, didn't he? He said, I want to see and I want to touch. Did you notice that Thomas wasn't in the room the first time? Jesus was in the room. Thomas was in the room the second time, and Jesus already knew from the first time what Thomas was going to need this time. Can I tell you that God knows exactly what you need. You don't have to remind him. You don't have to actually tell him. He knows it before you even ask for it. He knows what you need. And that's where belief gets that test. Amen? You have to stand in that testing ground there, and you have to have your belief over doubt. I'm thinking about Peter. Um, when Jesus told, remember the uh, apostle Peter walking on water? All right? Do you remember that story from uh, the Gospel of Matthew is the one I'm thinking of. Jesus told the disciples to get into the boat, go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee ahead of him. A storm comes up. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Jesus comes walking on the water. The disciples are filled with fear. And Jesus says, peace, don't be afraid, right? And Peter says, Jesus, I got some knowledge of you. I got, I got a word. I watched you, but... If it's really you, I want to walk to you on the water. And he did. But what happened? He started to sink. He lacked that level of faith where he trusted with his whole life. He trusted Jesus in certain areas, but not in this one. Jesus said, you have so little faith to Peter when he was pulling him back up out of the water. In fact, he says, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Another example one. Jesus curses the fig tree. Jesus is hungry. He's looking for some fruit. And the figs, of, you know, this fig tree has all kinds of leaves. It's green. It's lush. But it doesn't have any fruit, and it's supposed to have fruit. Jesus cursed it. He said, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the tree withered. And the disciples were in awe. <clears throat> and Jesus looked at them and said, if you have faith and you don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. You will receive it. And it has everything to do with the, the trust that we put in God and our understanding of the things that God wants to bring into our lives. Amen? Now, it's not about trusting him for 
for, you know, prosperity and, yeah, you want to trust him to help you pay your bills? Yes, that's a really good thing to start to step out there and go like, yes, Lord, help me. Help to provide for me. You take care of me, Lord. And he is going to do that. But just to accumulate, that is not a part of the gospel story. It's not. Jesus wants us to come in and go like, we want you to fill us with eternal life, which helps us to live the life that you've designed us to live here in this world to represent you and bring more to salvation. And that is what faith is for. Amen? That is what faith is for. Jesus prepares to send the disciples into the world by breathing on them. In Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 7, God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils, and he became a living person. And uh, what sin took away, God is returning. Amen? And, the, and Jesus breathed on him. What did he breathe? He breathed on him eternal life. Amen? Amen? The spirit of life. The spirit of life. And he gave them the power to understand that he was with them. That brings me to the third one. Life over death. Life over death. Sin no longer separates us from God. Jesus already paid that price. John 10.10 10 says, The thief wants to rob, kill, and destroy life. But Jesus came that we might have eternal life in abundance. So we can have this eternal life with God. It's a way to know the Father. In fact, in John 17, Jesus prayed this prayer, and we heard this a few a week and a half ago at our Tanabre service. The way to know the Father is through the Son. And the way to have, know that you have eternal life is to know the Father and to know that Jesus is the Savior. Eternal life is extended through Christ's anointed words. The word draws people to Christ, and we begin to see uh, Jesus in our lives as we see the word put to action. There's more of Christ in us and less of the world in, in less of our flesh. Eternal life is knowing and living with God, not just avoiding hell, but being offered life. Somebody say life. life. You are offered life. The evidence of true faith is found in relationship. Relationship with God. He wants to bring that kind of life that we were created to live. In that, in that room, Jesus breathed on the disciples. But can I tell you, that through the power of the Spirit, he breathes into your life every day. And will you breathe deeply in of the Spirit, or will you just kind of do this shallow breathing to kind of have just a little bit of an understanding of God, but you don't really trust him with your whole life? See, you have to be able to say that I, I need to grow in my belief and I need to trust him. I need, I need that life to overcome dead living. You and I, when we are not bringing God into every aspect of our lives, we are living in, we have dead places, amen? Dead space, dead space, amen? We need to have that living Christ in us. The good news is that um, life with God is endless. And we can always go deeper, higher, wider, greater in his love and in his life. Death can't interrupt eternal life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And whoever believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. So whoever has the Son has life and we're to be filled with the fullness of God's life. Amen? The fullness of God's life. I saw a, um, a passage yesterday, a quote, if you will, and it touched me. I, I, I read it over. How many of you have ever just, you saw something, you just went like, yeah, that just so resonates. It's just such truth. And the Spirit of God bears witness when we've heard the truth. And I read this passage over and over and over again, and I want to share it with you. I believe churches are meant for praising God, but so are 2 a.m. car rides, showers, coffee shops, the gym, conversations with friends, strangers, etc. So don't let a building confine your faith because we never will change the world by just going to church. We need to be the church. And that's a good one. Amen? So how are you going to be the church? 
You're going to be the church because you understand and you believe that everything that God has said that he would do, he will do. Amen? Everything that he has offered to you, you must believe that it is yours and it's a gift in the power of grace. You don't earn it. It is not because you have done things so right in your life and it's not, you're not going to be rejected because you've done them so wrong. It's because you have been willing to believe and put your complete trust, open your heart all the way up and say, this is about your life in me, God, and I'm going to embrace that life, that eternal life. Because, you know, people think that eternal life is when you die and you go be with God. And there's nothing in Scripture that says that. Jesus says he died so that you and I might know abundant living here and now. Amen? Amen. It is the truth whether or not you and I grab a hold of it. That's why our faith is so essential. You and I need to understand that life, eternal, eternal life, is that essential part of every one of us that needs to be set free to move and, and that you and I have to stop trying to put it into a box that we don't understand, but just set it free. Amen? Amen. Jesus came so that we might be liberated and free from the constraints of the world and that we would walk in his way and his life in the resurrection life. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for eternal life. We thank you that you bring us ways every day to expand our realities, God. You, you make it possible that we can know things that we have no idea how we know. You impart thoughts. You, put, you speak into our lives. You bring things into uh, fruition, Father. You orchestrate things as a great director. You make a way where there seems to be no way, and we always have a better life with you than apart from you. And we don't know why we don't trust you. God, forgive us for, for departing from that, that trust and that belief and putting it together real saving faith. We need to have that authentic faith working in our lives all the time so that we will truly be a pleasure and a, and a better messenger of your grace and to the good news that we need to share in this world. You, you are an amazing father. You, we thank you, Jesus, as, as the son of righteousness and our brother uh, in that process. We accept that. We believe that. We stand in that place. And Holy Spirit, you make this life rise up within us. And so we just praise you for that, and we thank you for all that you do, and we thank you for, for taking us uh, beyond fear into peace, taking us beyond doubt into that belief place. And we thank you, God, that you take us um, from death into life, real life. You make that possible for us, Lord, and we just thank you and praise you. Bring us into that place of oneness. Oneness is worship, so bring us back to a place of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him. It's for Jesus, amen. It's for the Lord. You give him that applause, amen. He is awesome. He wants your life, you. He loves you so much, there are just no words. Every time I look in here, it's about this extravagant love that God has for each one of us, amen? And then he says, I love you so much, I love your little personalities, just let me put my life in you so you got some direction, amen? And it's, what an invitation, right? And it's called grace. Somebody say grace. Amen. So... You're standing there, and you need to believe. So if you need some special touch today, which you're believing for, and you've heard the word, and the word is ministered to your heart, and you know that you need to trust him with your whole life, what is it that you need to believe for? If you need something today, raise your hand. Right up here. Raise your hand. You need something. Heavenly Father, we believe. 
We believe we have the grace and you have given us the assurance and you see the hands that have been raised and God, they need a touch and we are trusting you with our whole lives, God, and we believe that you cannot lie. You have promised to make us whole and we pray, Father, for you to make us whole today in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Blessings for your week.